I'm quite sick still, but I'm here at school, got my hot chocolate in one hand and my egg sandwich in the other. Let's talk about some rumors and some reports that have come out over the past few days. This one is quite a doozy because if this had happened, which it could have very well happened, it would have changed the narrative of either of the teams involved up until today still. Check out this article on Sportsnet. Report, Oilers almost acquired Ryan McDonough in 2016 Blockbuster. Now, the source here is Larry Brook from the New York Post, who talks about how in the 2016 NHL draft, the New York Rangers almost sent Ryan McDonough to the Edmonton Oilers in exchange for the fourth overall pick. In addition to this, there would have been other pieces that would have been swapped as well. And obviously, we kind of know now, that didn't happen. The Oilers kept the fourth overall pick, and they chose Jesse Pugliarvi. The article at the very bottom, at the tail end of the piece, talks about how the Oilers actually did add a defenseman, because five days after the draft, they traded Taylor Hall for Adam Larson. That was the day that everything big happened. Subban for Weber, Stamkos resigns, and Adam Larson gets traded for a future MVP. Now, obviously, we all kind of know the story of what happens next. Pulley Yarvi is not necessarily the guy who is the best in the world at what he does. His teammate for sure is, but Pulley Yarvi is in that limbo position where now some people are starting to call him trade bait, which is very weird, but at the same time, LMAO classic Oilers. Paul Yarvi is not necessarily the guy that the Oilers thought he would be this far into his career. Ryan McDonough got traded to Tampa Bay, and that's basically that. Now, what else are you guys probably asking? Well, what did the Rangers want to do with that fourth overall pick? Well, the article talks about that too. It turns out that the New York Rangers were really high on Clayton Keller who eventually went 7th overall to the Arizona Coyotes. This is quite weird, because honestly, I understand it. Clayton Keller is so good, and a lot of people were really high on him, myself included. I thought he was going to be a sleeper pick for sure, which is why I was really happy that he went 7th overall, because I thought he was going to go a little bit later. But it actually talks about in the article here that the Rangers, as well as a few other teams highlighted in the 31 Thoughts blog, such as the St. Louis Blues and the Arizona Coyotes. These teams all wanted to trade for the fourth overall pick to pick Keller. Now, obviously, we know what happens. Arizona didn't actually need to make that trade for the fourth overall pick because they ended up picking Keller at seventh. He was there when they drafted. But the other teams, New York and St. Louis, they wanted to make that trade too which would have been really weird today, seeing Clayton Keller in either a New York Rangers jersey or a St. Louis Blues jersey. But honestly, the biggest thing for me here is the trade for the Oilers, and what things would have been like if they got Ryan McDonough. McDonough's legitimately a really good defender. He's a top four, top two on some teams, but obviously you could argue that on Tampa. He could potentially be a top six, which is quite crazy to see, but it's quite realistic. That's not a dig at McDonough by any means, but it's just a testament to how good Tampa's decor is. But if the Oilers grabbed Ryan McDonough in exchange for what eventually would have been Jesse Pugliarvi in the fourth overall pick, then that Taylor Hall for Adam Larson trade never happens. I think that's quite easy to understand, right? They were looking for one defender, and they would have gotten that with McDonough. So today... How would that team look like? You'd have McDavid, Taylor Hall, who is an MVP, all their other guys who they still have, in addition to Ryan McDonough on the defenders' core. That sounds amazing. That is incredible. Imagine if McDavid still had Hall and McDonough was there on the point feeding them and allowing them to play their game. Like, everything would have been different. And today, we might not have seen the firing of Peter Shirelli. Because who knows, I mean, I'm not going to defend anything else that he's done, but obviously if this was able to happen, I'm pretty sure that Oilers fans 
probably would be in a better spot now than they are currently. Because that just sounds so good. And it was so close to happening, yet so far away at the same time. Meanwhile, for the New York Rangers, things might have been a little bit different for them. I mean, they traded McDonough anyways. Imagine the Rangers with Keller on their forward core. That would be absolutely bonkers right now. And we all know how good Clayton Keller is. Imagine him tearing things up with, I don't know, Mika Zibanejad or something. Things would have been pretty cool over there too, right? Ultimately, though, I think the biggest winner from this no-trade situation is the Arizona Coyotes. Because as highlighted, they did want to trade for that pick too. And they didn't need to. Because they just waited. They sat there. Instead of trading up to fourth overall to take Keller, they sat at seventh and took him when he was available there. Overall, they're the biggest winners here. New York Rangers, eh, you guys could have been a little bit better with Keller on your forward core. Edmonton Oilers, eh, it's an even bigger eh for this one, because they could have had McDonough, who's a pretty good D-man, and kept Taylor Hall. And they wouldn't have had Bully Arvey, which a lot of Oilers fans today would probably be like, I mean, for Ryan McDonough? Yeah, sure, why not, right? It's a very interesting thing to think about. I'll leave a link down to the article in the description below. Hope you guys enjoyed this miniature plus the other controls I saying gaming and bye.